Okay, so I just took the motor plates out. Sell the mid plate in because I was far too lazy to take out the transmission. I also don't know if you can hear me. I weld stuff. I don't make videos. Hey everybody, welcome back to video number three on this thing. This time we are going to be um, working on the cooling stack, getting a heat exchanger mounted, like I said, and then I'm going to pull this engine plate out because I've 100% decided we're not going to go that route. We're going to put a set of engine mounts and a proper transmission mount in it. Um, so that's going to be next. I'm going to get the engine mounted for good. Start building the training cross member after that. Finish the turbo mount and get the intercooler mounted. So let's go to it. So uh, mid plate's gone. Mid plate is still there. Front motor plate is gone. Uh, motor mounts are in. I've had these atomic fab motor mounts for four years now from Richard. Uh, we put together like a bolt in LS, LT, whatever swap mount you want to call it forever ago. So hint, if you want to LS swap your truck, technically it bolts in. You just got to call it. Um, threw the accessories back on, put the belt on, kind of everything fits a lot better. Uh, the alternator is still really close to the steering, um, but that's because the LT alternator, the power steering, or the power steering, the battery cable stud comes at the top instead of at the back like all the LS ones. So. I'm going to have to buy an LS one, the stud at the back instead of at the side, and hopefully then the steering fits. If not, then I'll have to probably make a new steering shaft with some Borgeson joints or something like that. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to pop the water pump off and pull these heater hose fittings out and also the upper rad hose weld and bungs on all of them. Um, actually saying that now, I'll probably just uh, tap the heater hose fittings to pipe thread. Uh, because we have swivel fittings that I like to use sometimes that keep everything really, really tight to the water pump. And I may wind up just kind of going up this valley here and hitting the heater hoses up there. And that'll give me a lot more room for the hot side to come through and connect to the turbo. So yeah. I pull the pump off and I'll show you how I do that. All right, so I got the hose ends out of here. Uh, let's use the air hammer. Uh, so this is a number 16. Weld bung from Vibrant, fits on there. Just perfect, there's a part number. The beautiful thing about these LS water pumps, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> is they're the perfect hole size for a half inch and a three inch pipe tap. I've got uh, a pipe tap specifically cut down just so I can uh, run it in further. This is not an issue on this water pump, but I think the truck ones uh, have some type of casting inside here that the tap runs into before it opens up enough to get uh, the fittings to be even, and that drives me bonkers, so I cut a tap down so that I can have one that starts, and then I can run this one in, you know, a lot deeper so that it is uh, opened up more so that I can have these two fittings uh, even. Uh, you know, because pipe tap, uh, the pipe threads are tapered, so the further you go in, the wider it makes the thread seat, and the further you can thread the fitting in. So I always make these very uh, parallel, just because it drives me nuts when there's pipe fittings. Number one, it drives me nuts when they hang out really far. Number two, it drives me even more nuts when they 
uh, you know, they sit staggered or whatever. So I like to run this one in and then I adjust this one to make sure that they're both in nice and flush. So I'm gonna go ahead and weld this, get these tapped. We'll get this back on the truck and go on to the next thing. So this is what I was talking about. These are wound in as far as I can get them with my fingers. This one gives me a couple threads, uh, which will be perfect for me to put some thread sealing on and get it tightened up. This one sticks way out. So I'm gonna have to get my other tap, run this hole in, you know, five or six more threads. However, <clears throat> it's a good start. And there's the number 16 fitting welded on. So we'll have a number 16 upper hose and a number 20 lower hose. Um, <clears throat> probably could have made them both out of dash 16. However, um, I was originally planning to make them both out of dash 20, but you can see the space in here does not allow for such a thing. So we'll go dash 20 lower and dash 16 upper. So there. Okay, kitties, that's gonna end it off for tonight because I'm tired and I feel like ass. So, pumps just back on quick. You can see how tight these fittings are gonna be able to get me up to there. Like I said, that's a dash 20 hose end, that's dash 16. This, I think the radiator sits about here, so I think I might have to run you know, like a 30 and a 30 off the rad, but this one I'll be able to come up and I'll probably have a 90 straight down out of the radiator and it'll go into that. But yeah, you still see the mid plate that needs to come out. But anyway, good progress for tonight. So I've got the heat exchanger uh, fit. I just use some 321 blocks to space it up, uh, which makes it obviously level against this. And then I just measured the gap and I measured side to side. And then I made sure that I set my height, which I had chose while it was all in the truck, but I just made sure that that was touching both sides to make sure it's square. And that's how I leveled it on both sides. So obviously I had measured the bungs to the end tanks here. So that makes sure everything's square and centered. And then went ahead and welded the outsides of both the brackets, put some stitches on there just so I can, you know, they're held. And obviously the same over here. So I'm just letting it cool off a little bit and I'm gonna pull the heat exchanger and the AC condenser out and weld the bungs for good and the bracket for good. And then I'm gonna cut these tabs off, which are meant to mount in the Hondas. And I'm also gonna cut the rad cap off because uh, we don't need a rad style pressure cap on this system. I'm undecided if I'm gonna put a cap, like a, just an O-ring type cap in here, I would probably need to do like an extension to bring it up into the grill area. I think I probably will just cause, just cause again, it's gonna be a huge cooling system and the tank's gonna be in the back of the truck and I just wanna make sure that it's fully bled and <coughs> excuse me, whatever, serviceable. So I'll probably do that, uh, but yeah, that's that. So I'm gonna take it all apart, get it welded up and we'll start fitting it to the truck. Now that everything's mounted, um, including the fans, I can actually place it in the truck where I want it to be and design the mounts around the thickness of this and, and the fact that it's all, you know, together now. So now that the cooling stack is all pinned together, uh, I had the rad saddle out and uh, designed 
uh, this side bracket so that I can kind of build, sorry for the instructions, I can kind of build um, this bracket and then once everything is located, you know, up to whatever point, I'll be able to draw the other bracket, but I'll show you what I got going on in CAD right now. The starting brackets. So this is going to be the truck side. This will bolt to that rad saddle there. This is an existing hole here, and this is an existing hole here, but both already have threads in them. So I'll be able to use those to um, kind of locate this, and then I'll be able to use this hole and these two holes uh, to add rivet nuts to and to add matching fasteners to. I think I lied, actually. I think this this is the existing hole, and I think this is the hole I added. So this one exists already. So does this one. And then these three will be new ones. And then uh, these will be the holes that the rattle mount to. And we're going to do that with... Um, the same snapper grommets that we use for uh, exhaust. They're like a thick, um, you know, pretty durable polyurethane type deal. And then I've got these brackets that I've cut, um, or I'm having cut, out of aluminum to weld to the end tanks of the rad. So I had two of these cut. They'll both be the same. And then I'll be able to, again, once the rad's in the truck, I'll be able to measure um, for this side over here that will uh, allow me to finish mounting the cooling stack. But that's what the, the little grommet looks like. It just unsnaps. And uh, yeah, they work really good. Um, reason I'm mounting everything on rubber and or polyurethane in this thing is because, like I said before, I really want it to be a good street truck. I want everything to last. I don't want to have you know, cracking or weird vibrations or anything like that. So the cooling stack as an assembly will be mounted, obviously solid together. Um, but most cooling stacks factory are like that. If you look in your car, generally the AC condenser is mounted solid to the rad, um, things like that. So I'm gonna get that mounted. And uh, so beginning of next week, I should have these brackets and I should also have the cross member uh, that I designed to mount the heat exchanger, same thing same bushings um so it'll it'll tab into the side of the frame rail there and the side of the frame rail there and it'll act as a kind of a brace since i removed that cross member that i talked about quite a while ago um so that will be the upper bracket and then like i said before i'm going to try and get some just probably like a single bushing on either side of the lower just to stop it from you know rocking a little bit even though we got six bushings on the top that intercooler is pretty heavy so I'd rather it be overmounted than undermounted. That cross member I was talking about, um, it's going to be made out of 316 steel, I think. I can't remember. I already ordered it. It'll be here Monday. Today's Saturday. So I think it's 316 steel, but I can't remember. Um, anyway, so it does actually sweep back, as you can see, and it is off center. I wanted to keep the inner cooler this way so that uh, this charge pipe up to the turbo was as far. It didn't have to do like a big kick. And then I wanted this one that goes up to the throttle body, same deal. I kind of wanted it as straight a shot as possible. So I didn't have to have all kinds of, you know, way more tubing than I needed to make the kick over. Um, so that's what it's going to look like all assembled. Um, you can see the hardware and everything there. Uh, let me just do that. Yeah, so um, same thing, rubber bushings. There'll be steel weld bungs welded on the back of here so that I won't have to, you know, nut and bolt it. I'll just be able to set the cross member in and or drop the intercooler out the bottom. And then there'll be um, the bosses welded into the chassis here. And same thing, I'll be able to just, you know, run four three-eighths bolts on either side into the chassis and it should be plenty enough to hold that thing. So I'm getting pretty excited for that. I've been working on this quite a while because it's been, you know, a challenge for a guy who's relatively new to CAD. So, yeah, it'll be cool to see it actually mounted and not sitting on wood on the floor. So I want to weld this bracket into the heat exchanger, and I'm going to show you how I will measure this to make sure that it's square with the front face here. This thing's kind of an odd shape, and the welds are not, you know, the nicest around here. Um, 
So it's hard to measure it off any of these faces to square it up and make sure that it's center or whatever. So I've got a tack weld here just in one corner. I kind of rough measured this where I want it. So I'm going to take a combination square. And I'm going to just put this face here. And I'm going to slide that up until that touches there. I'm going to lock it. And then I'm going to be able to slide this over. And it's actually already pretty much bang on. But that's going to give you, because this is a nice flat face, this is going to take up any odd slack throughout there. And it's going to, uh, you know, allow me not to have to measure off this ground weld that doesn't really, you know, look the same from this end to this end. It doesn't give me a good reference point. So this is a nice flat face off the cooler. I'm going to be able to use that combination square to come across, make sure that this is straight. Uh, to this face, which is, I mean, the straightest part on it probably. So now I'm going to heat up a torch for three hours to get some heat into this thing. Not actually, but it's going to take forever because it's a giant heat sink. And then I'm going to weld it. It's all welded. These ones aren't my best work, but it's a pretty deep cavity in there that I had to just blast. And I welded this thing in like, I don't know, 200 amps because it's super, super dense and it just sucks all the heat in. So it's still 11 billion degrees. But yeah, that one's not bad. However, the top mount's done. Uh, once I actually design the, uh, I don't know, top bracket for the chassis and this thing sits in there, there will be another set of tabs probably on the bottom, but that thing's going to sit kind of over here as you guys have seen. So probably tonight on CAD, I'm going to finish the top bracket that's more than likely going to bolt to the chassis, uh, instead of weld. And then I will make the uh, lower tabs and that'll be all done. Next up, uh, this mount is going to go away because I'm an idiot. And when I was doing the motor plate, it would have been fine because it would have all been solid mounted and everything would have been fine. I would have put slip joints in the, you know, hot side stuff that goes into the turbo. Everybody would have been happy. But now that this is going to have some movement with these poly mounts, that's not gonna work anymore. That'll, you know, rip shit apart. So um, I'm going to basically copy this idea with the tabs and the tube and whatever, and attach it to three or four of the cylinder head bolts over here. And then I'll have a piece of DOM tube, much the same as this, come out of the head and hit that. You can just barely see it, hit that mount right there. And then it will float with the engine. So I'm really glad that that's the one piece that's like 100% done uh, because now it's not done and it's junk. So that's the way it is when you can't make up your mind and you think about things to no end and you stare at the ceiling instead of going to sleep and you come up with these solutions and or make more problems for yourself. So we're going to end this one off there. Uh, next time we'll mount this, the whole cooling stack for good. We'll mount that and we will make the actual transmission cross member and then the drivetrain will be bolted in for good until I tear everything apart and power coat it all. But theoretically it is in there for good. I got to take that motor plate out still. Um, yeah. So, see you next time. Bye.